Um, so yeah, I, I grew up um, in North Wales. I grew up on the Cain Peninsula to a fishing family um, where I used to go out before school with my dad to go around the pots. And it's definitely where kind of my, my passion for marine life has come from. Um, so following from there, the years growing up um, in the north coast of Bothan Shine then. Um, so dad was also on the lifeboat. So I spent a lot of my childhood swimming around that bay of Bothan Shine um, and then eventually progressing into snorkeling and then started diving in 2016, um, where I joined the local Sheehan Subacqua Club and still am a member today where we're actively out two, three, two, three times a week um, in the summer if the weather allows for it. Um, and it's good. It's a growing club. So luckily um, this year we've had a good uptake of members um, and hopefully this year we've had a good uptake of members um, because it's, it's nice to be able to share experiences with people around the North Wales coastline. From there, then I studied marine biology in Plymouth then suddenly realising actually it's more beneficial for me to move back to North Wales um, and study in Bangor, which is one of the best universities for marine biology. Um, and I got a placement year with Natural Resources Wales, working with them. And from there, that's kind of where my uh, shark background then started um, with Angel Shark Project Wales. Um, helped launch that in 2018. And since then, I have been working for London Zoo slash Natural Resources Wales on better understanding angel sharks. But around all of that, I got into the diving early on in 2016 and I didn't had never picked up a camera before getting in the water and it was only into a year of diving where I got a GoPro and then started to share some content of what was found off the local coastline for example Pothiscadan um, which I know many of you have been to um, and from there it kind of it grew and more people kind of got involved and enjoyed what was sharing and then over the last few years got into it more um, professionally as a freelancer and I did my HSE diving which allowed me to get in the water even more and yeah since there I have enjoyed sharing and it's been a passion to do so and had so many amazing opportunities to get involved with a variety of different projects to share what we have off Wales. I do occasionally venture over the border to England which I'm doing next week to Falmouth which will be my first ever dive along the south coast of England um, and last year I was fortunate to go up to Scotland a few times to film some projects up there. And uh, away from sharks as, as well, um, I also do a lot of work with Project Seagrass. Um, previously in the past, I may have, uh, I think I recognise one of the two who'd been involved in some sea search work um, where I'd run some sea search, seagrass diving stuff in Portland too, because it is one of the best meadows off the Welsh coast and it's just on the daughter and when the visibility is good there, um, it is an amazing place to dive. Um, it does feel like you go away to somewhere more tropical until you get out and realise it's, it's still not as warm as it should be. And then, yeah, for Angel Shark Project Wales, um, a quick overview of that because um, if anyone's ever going to be, if anyone's ever lucky enough to see an angel shark off the Welsh coast, then it, or the English coast and the south coast of England is another place where historically angel sharks are found, then we'd love to find, uh, have that record shared to the project. Because um, as part of the project, we're, we're aiming to better understand the species, um, which has declined significantly over the last 50 years. Um, so it was once found throughout the Northeast Atlantic and the Mediterranean. Now its main stronghold is the Canaries. Um, and potentially from research we've done in the paper we recently released, um, Wales is potentially the next best place for angel sharks, um, as well as Ireland and a few other places in the Mediterranean. But it's exciting that we have one of the rarest sharks of the world still present off the Welsh coast. And in, in numbers where we get about eight records a year, and of those eight records, one or two of them a year are from either free divers or divers too. Um, that's really exciting. And, and these are, from what I've heard, is when the angel shark's moving, because when they're buried, it's really challenging to, to spot one um, when they're in the sand. But for my role, I work very closely with fishers um, across Wales to make sure if an angel shark is caught, where to report them, and also to make sure um, if they are caught, how to release one back safely, because it's illegal to target the species um, in the UK. And a lot of work's also involved with schools, doing community events, and just in general, showing people what the angel shark looks like and why it's important to help understand that species. And through all the work we've done since 2008, 
back in July this year, we released the first scientific paper providing all this information about angel sharks with records dating back to 1812 and over 2,200 of these, um, of which a few hundred have been in the last 20 years, which was exciting. Um, just some of the highlights that we've done over the years. Um, back in 2019, we did run a Dive for Angels event to see whether we can get a load of divers and snorkelers in the water um, to see if we can find an angel shark. Unfortunately, the survey there was unsuccessful, but we did have some really good dives and um, some some nice species seen whilst we were diving, including John Dory, which isn't seen very often off the coast. And I think that was the last time I'd saw one then. And then recently we had started Angel Shark, well, um, Project Shark, which is Sharks Inspiring Action and Research with Communities. Um, and this is kind of a progression of Angel Shark Project Wales, um, where we're now looking at other shark species as well as angel sharks. So we've got tope, stingrays and spur dog. Um, all species that are quite challenging to see as divers, um, but you never know where you can see some of these species. Um, Stingray is definitely on the list to film next, um, but it's going to be a real challenge. But not, I'm not going to say impossible because it's not. Um, and again, same methodology, we're working with fishers, um, but this time we've got um, more work on collecting scientific research. So previously we trialed eDNA, which is where we take water and we test that for DNA of different sharks. Um, and also baited remote underwater video systems, which is something I've personally been doing for the last couple of years. Um, it's a technology which is straightforward of putting bait and a camera in the water for an hour and see what species come to it. Um, and this year we've got a few more cameras set up. So we've We've been doing a series of these camera drops working with fishers in Cardigan Bay. And this is just for some examples that I got back in the 2019 project. Um, really does showcase the, the Welsh marine environment in a different way because as divers, sometimes we don't get to see some of these species, um, whereas the baited cameras is definitely a nice way of showing it um, on how they behave without people being there too. Um, and it's, it's something that has picked up a lot of traction when I first put this footage out to show that Wales has a lot more sharks than people think and also there's a lot more diversity than people think too um, and this footage at one time was, was shared quite a bit across social media which was exciting and the point of wanting to share this with people and showing them what we do have and yeah Tope was definitely one of those that caught people's attention there was one footage of a female within three meters of water about 50 yards off the beach um, but again, completely harmless to people and, and unfortunately very shy. So we don't really get to see them much. And then this would have been this, it could be the first underwater footage of a juvenile tope. So it's about 25 centimeters long um, and would have only been born in the last few weeks. Um, so that was really exciting to see. And then into kind of what I do as a real big side, as a passion that now is something that I really enjoy doing more and more of. Um, and it's, it's coping down into different elements. So photography is as part of it. And it's not a big part of it. I'm still hugely learning a lot more um, about photography. Um, current setup is using the Panasonic GH5, which is more of a video camera than the um, photographer stills, but it's still great quality for it. Um, and it's something that I'm still yeah, definitely progressing a lot more with, and it's it's been been a journey to do so. Um, but I'm enjoying it. It's been been great, and it's just to be able to showcase what we have. Um, but predominantly, yeah, videos is is where I sit um, and in creation of the videos. So I'm always listening out for any new tips or any any advice on making sure that the images are, are better captured or sharper, um, which is always challenging when there is quite a lot of silt um, or plankton in the water. And going on to kind of a lot of the video stuff, a lot of it is is posted on social media to showcase what we have. Um, but more and more so over the last few years, that opportunity has arisen to work with TV programs um, and different documentaries. And this all started back by one accidental capture of, um, the f again, feels like it was one of the first as well of mating dogfish. And that was off the north coast of Penshire. And that was picked up by the Discovery Channel and then featured in Shark Week. And then from there, fortunately, the opportunities have grown um, to be part of 
variety of different TV programs, both behind and front of the camera, um, and and some of these being some of the bigger ones for BBC Wales, such as the Wonders of the Celtic Deep, um, where I was allowed, where I was part of the dive team as well as um, filming some of the footage. Um, but a personal highlight was last year, where I was asked to do part of the new Steve Batchel program with sharks, um, talking about the recent encounter of the angel shark, um, and also using a range of footage which was captured all off the Welsh coast and, and why it was important for me to be sharing this footage and, and allowing people to see what it's found. Um, for me, off my home patch, but also to kind of encourage others to go out and explore to their own local patches. And it doesn't have to be with diving gear either. A lot of the time I try and get people to just be like, just explore using snorkel or free diving because you can also see so much wildlife that way too. Um, and being a Welsh speaker, a big push has also been working with the Welsh S4C channel um, and kind of taking out presenters into different areas, showcasing um, some species that are um, hidden away in the sand, such as weaver fish and also important messages of how to be safe around some of the marine life too, such as weaver fish and jellyfish. And then last week I was asked to go on to the afternoon show on the S4C to have a chat about diving um, and what it's like to be underwater and filming underwater um, and how people can learn to dive themselves and experience some of these creatures themselves. So away from these, the, the media stuff as well, it's always been uh, a drive to try and take the marine environment for people. Um, and if they can't go in the water themselves, what's the way of making it more inclusive and making it more accessible to them? Um, and one way I've been doing that is using 360 videos. Um, unfortunately, I can't play videos on here. Um, to the presentation, but if on YouTube, I've got a few that I've been put there um, and recently been trying 360 more and more so. Um, simple GoPro 360 Max in an acrylic dome, it looks like a fishbowl, um, and that needs quite a bit of weight, about eight kilos, because um, it's very positively buoyant. But then taking that below the surface and either leaving it there for a bit or going for a dive and taking kind of the viewers on the journey with me through a dive. Um, this one particularly was last year um, when the spider crabs were in, in August and one of the bays was absolutely covered in spider crabs um, up to three, four individuals high um, as part of their migration. And they do it for the protection in these really sheltered bays or just general really calming, peaceful moments of just dropping a 360 camera in the seagrass and leaving it for an hour or so and seeing what species come around. So there's some clips on YouTube of sand eel swimming around and another clip of like a red mullet, a gray mullet swimming around too. Um, but these can also then be put into VR headsets and they can then be taken into more educational purposes for schools um, and then allow people to kind of see what it's like without being within the water. Um, and it's it's really a nice way of engaging with people and showcasing what we do have off the coast. And fortunately, uh, I've got a few friends which are also uh, keen videographers. And a couple of years ago, we had the thought of how about we create our own series online to take viewers on a journey um, along the coastline and take a look at a couple of our favourite spots. So we came up with the bilingual online series called Wales Best of the West that was released last year. And we started up in North Wales, so I... It was kind of part led above water and part led them um, presented underwater um, where we started off in Pothyskadan diving there day and night. And then we went to Pothyshine doing the same diving there day and night before then heading down to Pembrokeshire um, to where Lloyd kind of picked out his two favorite sites, which are Martin's Haven and um, Stackpole Quay. But these sites weren't chosen because they were personal favorites. They also had important messages around them too. Um, and different conservation elements too. So for example, Porthinkine was chosen because of the importance of the seagrass meadow, and then it linked to the different conservation projects that were working there. Similar to Martins Haven, it had a, an exciting element of being the deepest shore dive you could do in Wales, but also within the Scoma Nature and Marine Reserve. And we wanted to make sure they all had their own unique selling point too. So one of the other key points was they were all accessible to anyone, all the depths, minus the Martins Haven, 
they're all relatively shallow, really sheltered places that anyone could watch the videos, take the information from it and go and explore them sites themselves. And we've just given them that snapshot. So these are all available online um, at Dando Cymru and, uh, and What Wales on YouTube. And yeah, it was it was a real task because we meant because it was bilingual, we meant had to do everything twice. Um, so, for example, when we were filming the seagrass, we did a two and a half hour dive, um, and that was at night. So by the time we got out of the water, it was almost two o'clock, and you can definitely hear in my voice that trying to say some of the things by the end of that dive was a bit more challenging, especially having to do it in Welsh following the English bit. Um, but overall, it was it was it had a good. Um, uptake and people enjoyed it and yeah it was a real task and it was a passion project but it was it was something we really wanted to do and thought it would be really good to do it and yeah maybe something we could do again later down the line um, after a bit of rest because it did definitely take it out of us um, but yeah there's been quite a few encounters over the years I've been really fortunate um, and as a marine biologist I'm always looking for kind of behaviors to film um and they could be the smallest behavior so quite often um as many of you know like watching a goby can end up being a whole dive being 60 minutes staring at this one goby or a couple of gobies um because you never know what they're going to do next they're quite interesting characters um and many of them do show very unique behaviors and um recently been filming a kind of the nesting behavior which has been really interesting to do but the the main one personally was finding this the um, angel shark and being the first to film one underwater on the UK coast. Um, and it was all by accident. Even though I work on a species that I've been studying for years, the encounter itself was completely by accident. It was on August bank holiday. I had the decision of either doing some housework or going for a dive. And I decided it was a good idea to go for a dive. And within 10 minutes of the dive, there was a tail and I'd only seen this tail ever before in the Canary Islands. So I had to go and kind of take a look, close look, so I didn't believe what I was seeing. And there it was, was this angel shark buried in the sand. Um, and it was yeah incredible to see. Um, I did manage to go back a couple of times following the first dive um, to film it again. And that's how I managed to get all the different behaviors of it, swimming, feeding, and burying itself under sand to make that kind of full sequence, which is something I never thought I'd get. Um, what made it even more exciting was this isn't an adult. This is only about 30 centimeters long. Um, so it's a recently newborn shark, which provided us then for the project evidence of angel sharks being a breeding population off the Welsh coast. So it was really exciting to see, see one and film one um, after yeah, saying multiple times it was impossible to do, which I'm no longer saying. And yeah, it got some it got some quite traction. But the main thing about it was it was it kind of put whales on its map on the map of being an important area and also kind of using this species as a as a flagship to other species or other sharks that are found off the Welsh coast. And personally that was that was an amazing part of it was to be able to do that and then use this message to communicate what is found off usually considered a dark and gloomy coastline. And then we do get other species. So from Personally, in Cardigan Bay, this isn't a species that we see very often anymore. Historically, it was really common, um, but had declined significantly in the to, uh, late 1990s. Um, but fortunately, a few over the last few years, we have been able to see a few more, specifically smaller juveniles. So, yeah, it's always great to see a thornback ray. And then the migrations is also quite a spectacle to see. Um, some years more than others. This year didn't seem to be such a big year. Um, but it looked like down on the south coast of England, St. Ives Way had a really good one. Um, but last year, in Porth Kyriad, it was one of the best I'd seen for a long time. So getting in the water and filming the amount of spider crabs was um, was amazing. And yeah, trying to get 360 footage to kind of provide the extent of it was also something that I was keen to do. But these are just examples of the some of the, the best ones that I've to mind, this is so many more encounters that I've had in many dives. Um, like I mentioned earlier, of the, the mating cat sharks is a weird one, but it was an amazing one to be able to kind of be one of the first people to film that too. Um, so yeah, it's always about the right time, right place with it. Um, I'm fortunate that I can still film and be where I kind of grew up and have these amazing opportunities to um, spend a lot of time underwater um, during the summertime. Fortunately, not so much now. Um, 
but yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to run through and kind of showcase what we have um, off the West Coast and some of the background of kind of how I got into it and what my kind of mission behind all the filming and the videography um, is really. So it's kind of over to you if you've got any questions. I did have one particular question. Uh, it's about that last slide about the spider crabs. Um, is, you, know, you said you've got to be in the right place at the right time. What 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 is the um, yeah. right what is what is the right place at the right time? Yeah. So, so give it, come, come and give away your secret. No, don't give away your secret. But it, it, it's, it's kind of they start to, they can't come in between kind of end of May into August, and it it could be it's huge. Um, but they, they are kind of, it's more into kind of the July, August time that you tend to see the bigger numbers um, in some of the smaller bays. Like Porth Kiriad is is known to be one of the bays where they, they're found in those kind of full aggregations. But interestingly enough, over the last few years, um, Porth Escadan, so when I started back in 2016, you probably, I don't think we did see any spider crabs at all. However, filming that series we did online, we did a night dive there, and we had an equally quite big extent of spider crabs in that bay too. So over the last couple of years, more so, a lot more spider crabs are seen on that part of the coast. Was the, because um, you had the, you're right, Ronnie, you had an encounter in Scotland with the flap escape, you know, was that, um, again, another accidental encounter, or did you go to one of the sites where you know you congregate? Uh, yeah, we was, I was asked to from an, another series that hopefully not soon. Uh, was I not meant to mention that? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's it's out there. It's the footage is out there. It was kind of it was by fluke because I just filmed the angel shark, and then the team I was filming with this, this series were like, "Oh, we're going to Scotland to film flapper skate. Do you want to come and try and film flapper skate?" And I was like, "I'm joining you. I'm coming up." Um, it was a site we knew about. Because um, we worked with um, Lauren up there with the Scottish Citizen yeah. Science kind of program, and we went there hoping we'd film them. And we had five dives, and we filmed them like three dives out of five. Wow. Which was yeah, they're incredible and they're huge. Jake, thanks again. Thanks again for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to meet some of you and dive with you soon.